Kieran, haven't been on a dinner break. We've been uh, talking to the Brains Trust out here because we've been uh, moving up towards a big call here. Let's, let's first of all talk about why I'm making this call. So let's start off in New South Wales. The seat of Reid here, this was always a target seat for Labor. The biggest one in New South Wales, and it's going the way they hoped. 27% of the vote. That's a good chunk there. You can see Sally Situ picking up that 3%, but Fiona Martin losing 10% at the moment and an increase in the Greens vote there. The Greens vote getting about 7 towards Sally Situ. She gets to 48. From there, it's a pretty simple path for her towards a two-party preferred. So on these numbers, we're calling Reid for the Labor Party at the moment. Then we look in Chisholm as well. So let's look down to Victoria, the seat of Chisholm. This previously been a knife-edge seat here. I've hit Tasmania there. Let's head to Victoria instead. So the seat of Chisholm, uh, again held by Gladys Liu. So again, 20% of the votes come through here. You're seeing a small swing to in towards Karina Garland. This seat is held by half a percent. Look how much Gladys Liu is losing there, eight and a half percent. And you're seeing an uptick in the Greens vote there that's only going to help Karina Garland. On those numbers, Karina Garland doesn't need any preferences after the Greens vote. So as we go through this vote, you're seeing a big swing towards Karina Garland. And we're saying that's a Labor victory in that seat. So Labor wins Chisholm as well. Then we head to New South Wales. So the seat of McKellar. We've already called Wentworth. This is another one that's under fire. The panel, the panel was talking about it. Another one that the Teals are targeting. So look at the primary vote. We're 33% down. Jason Polinsky's lost 40%. Look at Sophie Scomps, though. She's nearly level with him just on primary vote. The danger always for these seats for the uh, Liberal Party when they're facing these sorts of contests with strong... Uh, independence, and then you've got a Labor and Greens candidate as well, is they get below 40, 45%. They're well below those Greens and Labor primaries help Sophie Scomps get over the line. With this sort of margin at this point, we're saying that she wins that seat as well. So when we look at how we're tracking and we're calling these seats as we go, this is the issue for the Coalition. They start on 76, remember, they start on 76. Uh, Hughes, we'd already factored in. So yes, these are holds for the Liberal Party at the moment, but they're losing the others. So they're down five seats in a net sense at that stage. They get down to 71. They're five seats off majority at that point. And that's a long way off when you look at some of the other seats and how they're tracking. We're not calling these contests yet. The problem emerging for the Liberal Party is they're not going to, you'd think, save all of the seats that are getting in this sort of trouble. Nearly 30% counted in Deakin uh, in the outer suburbs of Melbourne. You're seeing 6% come off the vote of Michael Suka and the Greens picking quite a bit up there. UAP, so th th this is going to go down to two-party preferred at this point, but at this stage, look how far ahead Labor Party is, 55 to 44. So you're not far off calling the seat of Deakin as well. And that's the problem for uh, the Liberal Party, the other seats they might fall behind. Let's take a quick look at Higgins, which I know the panel's been talking about, an inner city seat in Melbourne. So again, 21% has been counted, pretty significant. 7% down for Katie Allen. She only holds this on 2.7%. And that's the problem. Yes, Labor's only picking up 2% so far, but they'll get about 80%, maybe more, from Sonia Simmons from the Greens. That alone is 20% onto their primary and means they're in a great position. So at this stage, 53.96 up, a significant amount ahead at this point in the count. This is the problem emerging again. So let's go to Queensland and the seat of Brisbane, which you've been talking about. I know Brisbane is in trouble as well as Ryan, but just to take Brisbane at this point and the primary vote again, 36% through, 10% down for Trevor Evans, well below that 45% danger mark. You can see Labor and the Greens close together. Um, and so whichever um, side finishes second, obviously, is going to be in a better position. And we're not calling Brisbane at this stage, but this is the problem. It's another uh, clear issue at the moment for the Liberal Party, well behind Labor. Would it spin out the same way in the Greens? Well, possibly not. We're not sure. That's why we're not calling the seat. And we'll see if we just look at that primary again. Who finishes second might matter and what happens with uh, One Nation and UAP and they'd probably tip Labor over the edge. So it's advantage Labor at the moment. The problem there, as you see, Kieran, when you look at the situation, not just the seats they're in trouble, but the seats that so far we're saying they've lost. Yes, there's more of the count to go. We're not calling the way the overall government goes, but we're saying as it stands, the coalition cannot return to a majority government and get those 76 seats. So no majority government for the uh, coalition. Tom Connell, thank you.